Wie geht's? Hey, hi Larry. <lacht> ja, danke, gut. Do you speak German? Uh, ich spreche kleiner Deutsch. <lacht> sehr gut, sehr gut. Yes, welcome. Yeah, thank you for invitation. Well, thank you for accepting. This is, uh, this is quite exciting. Uh, so, Ma Matthias Hoofs. Yes. Yes. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes. I, I saw correct. Matthias, yes. but Matthias. I want to. I want to get that. Want to get that I, correct. I so. Matthias too. <laughs> oh, sehr gut. Um, just let's start with how you're managing. Uh, are you working on any projects? What What's going on with you these days? Yeah, uh, it's a really a strange time. Um, crazy, and um, so. Um, Uh, tomorrow uh, I will go to an island in the north of Germany. We have there a concert um, in a church. It's a very, very big, uh, big uh, tradition there. They have every week a concert, every week. And it's a very small church, uh, four or five hundred people there. And um, they have to stop uh, since March. I played the last concert in March with a, a young brass ensemble. Uh, with new arrangements, and now they start again uh, for only uh, 50 people, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, bring the culture back to this very, uh, it's a very old church from uh, 12th uh, century with a very nice acoustic and so a big tradition there. And uh, yeah, uh, here in Germany, um, um, we, uh, we are, uh, Yeah, have a good situation. Yeah, because uh, the most orchestras are uh, paid over this time, mm -hmm. and all the musicians uh, they uh, um, they have their money to to um, to pay for their flats and and families and and so, and uh, there are uh, some um, freelance musicians uh, and they are uh, they have a very bad situation now. Um, But uh, still in Germany, we have not the, uh, a big uh, corona problem, yeah? Um, so it's, it, it works quite good. I could teach uh, personally in my school uh, in Hamburg. I see my students. Now we have rest, uh, summer rest, uh, till October. And, um, but um, yeah, I will do some recordings. Um, a good friend of mine, he has a a studio and uh, he invites me he composed some pieces for me and uh, so we we tried uh, uh, some funny things uh, <laughs> and and uh, try to have um, um, yeah a good time uh, nevertheless mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um, i think still it, we musicians uh, we um, um, we can play our instruments, we have our music, yeah? we have an idea uh, to make plans and uh, um, we can do some creative uh, things. And it's, um, this is positive. Yeah? If you have a, another a job um, only uh, working for, for this uh, with no ideas how it goes on, uh, it's a complete different situation. But if we have only our instrument, For me, it's uh, a very uh, good situation. Mm -hmm. uh, only practicing yeah, and uh, to come down, to reset, to think about your technique, or uh, you, we have time with the family. Yeah, so that's positive. The negative thing is, uh, and we cannot understand uh, because it's so different in the in the world. Yeah, so if you go by plane. Um, If the planes are full, yeah. If you have the election campaign of your president, it's so many people there, and uh, the Met and uh, they are close. So um, the the same situation in Germany. All the concert halls, festivals are closed, and so. But uh, if you go on the streets, um, so many people there, and uh, we musician, we cannot understand this. Some singers have the, he has an idea. Perhaps we should do some concerts in the plane. <laughs> the audience, yeah. yeah. They would enjoy it, I'm sure. Yeah. It's, it's so different. It's, and I'm one of those freelance musicians that you talk about. My calendar is completely uh, empty until January. 
Yes. And 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 maybe even beyond that right now. Yeah. And yes. it it seems like our industry is just well, everybody is hurt, but the music industry especially has been just devastated. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're more integral to society. We're we're so important, <laughs> right? To to yeah. everybody's life. It's just uh we'll find a way and we'll come out on the other side. Yeah. I'm sure, yes. Different, but yeah. we will we will survive. So yeah. Yeah. um you mentioned uh, Hamburg, and I worked on a cruise ship a couple of years ago, and I didn't know you could get to Hamburg <laughs> by ship. But yeah. uh, what what is the river that that comes down? Elbe. 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 Yes. And they were building the Elbe Philharmonie. Uh, yeah. Sorry for my pronunciation on no, that. No. Yeah. Elbe. Uh, yeah. And it was almost done. Uh, I didn't get to see it on the inside, but it was beautiful. The building is beautiful. Yeah, um, very special. Yeah. And you've, you've performed there. Yes, yes. How is that? Yeah, it's uh, very special uh, because uh, you are sitting in the middle of this building and all the audience around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, you have a, a very um, good atmosphere inside because the audience uh, could see each other. Uh, mm. And if you have a good atmosphere, it's like um, a fire burning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you have a, a, a very positive uh, atmosphere uh, and it takes every one, every people uh, could feel this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a normal concert hall, yeah, and um, in the back, the audience will uh, make this atmosphere the uh, people in the first rows, they <laughs> cannot see this yeah, or not feel. But mm -hmm. in this Elb Philharmonie, it's uh, from the first moment, it's wow, like this. Yeah? Um, I, I think it's not so easy to play because uh, they try to make, to build an acoustic uh, on which you can hear on, on every place. Yeah? So uh, if you uh, sit, uh, before or behind the orchestra or down or, or high uh, in the level, uh, they try to make um, uh, an acoustic for every um, seat. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's very dry acoustic. It's like mm -hmm. a, big, a very big studio. Mm -hmm. So you have no support. If you play a note, it, wow. stop, it uh, stops. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you play chamber music, a small, um, ensembles, uh, it's fantastic. But if you play very big orchestra with a, a big a distance, it's not so easy. You mm -hmm. have to make some rehearsals to, to have an idea how it works. Mm -hmm. So many different venues in Germany, in Europe. I mean, I've seen videos of, of maybe some of these churches. Uh, it, the one with uh, the German brass, is this on the island in that church that you were referring to? Is that? No, no, um, it's too small. Um, no, uh, in, uh, with German brass, we have a lot of uh, concerts in church, especially in, in uh, uh, the Christmas season. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we did a recording in the Thomas Church uh, in Leipzig, uh, where Bach um, uh, plays his organ and, and so it's very special atmosphere mm -hmm. or in Hamburg we have a fantastic big uh, church the St. Michael Church mm -hmm. with uh, 2,500 seats there and um, with uh, I think four organs yeah so you mm -hmm. have a lot of possibilities to make uh, music there mm -hmm. and uh, yeah there in church you have a very uh, big acoustic and um, very special yeah, the acoustic, right? In a church, the, it's not dry at all. The sound just goes and goes. Yeah, it's, yeah. For, a, for a trumpet player, that's, a, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, it's not so easy, too, because um, I very often play, with, uh, for example, with organ. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, the big organs, uh, the pipes are, um, I don't know, 10 meters above you. Yeah, so you play and cannot hear the pipes, uh, oh. and you you hear after in the acoustic your intonation. 
and sometimes it's difficult. Yeah, <laughs> so it's easier to uh, sometimes to have a direct contact to hear what mm -hmm. happened. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's uh, the sound; it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, most of what I had seen early with you is all on piccolo trumpet, and not. And of course, I know you play the the larger horns, but uh, your sound on the B flat. And and I'm thinking about the the video I just watched, the Christmas, uh, Spanish Christmas. Yes. Um, Spanish Weihnacht. Yeah, Spanish uh, Weihnacht. Yes. Good um, your the B flat sound is. Gorgeous! It's just such a lyrical sound. It's beautiful. Um, who did? How did you develop your sound? Who were you listening to? And I mean, obviously, your sound is your sound, but you grew up listening to and modeling who? Yeah. So um, we have so many um, fantastic players. So so different ways they they, they play and. Uh, when I start to study, when I finished uh, school, um, I have um, uh, I come to the I came to the Academy of Dolan Philharmonic, mm -hmm. and um, the trumpet players at this time, um, Conrad Gold, Martin Kretzer, Georg Kilzer, uh, they have a very special sound, very dark, and um, so um, one year later, I I start. Um, at the Hamburg Philharmonic as solo trumpet. Mm -hmm. And I was very young and I have to play all the difficult things. So, and uh, I want to have a big sound, but it was not possible at this time because I uh, have to play everything. And so uh, I'm looking for a mouthpiece and instruments who works easy, yeah. And then after a while, um, when I change more comfortable and more power, uh, then I have the idea uh, come more in this direction I want to go. Yeah, and um, especially if you play in the opera, you hear the singers on on the stage, uh, and for me it's every time uh, uh, so fantastic to hear how the voice works. Yeah, and which ease you could play and which. Uh, only with your voice you can fill a very big hall. <laughs> and then uh, you have an idea uh, in which way you want to go, uh, in which way you want to, uh, to play. And it's um, over the years, um, so many players and you have to decide, oh, this is fantastic from him, this is from, uh, fantastic for her, for her. And uh, so um, you have, different ideas and come together and then create your own thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, uh, interesting. And our sound, it's like an our ID card. Yeah. Yes. If everyone wants to have the same sound um, or every orchestra wants to have the same sound. It's not interesting. Yeah. For me, it's interesting if I hear a piece from uh, Moscow and uh, the same piece uh, in Paris and they are completely different because mm -hmm. they have different traditions and that's mm -hmm. interesting but nowadays um, uh, the conductor they are traveling and uh, they have one idea of the sound and they want <laughs> to hear the same sound in Paris and the same sound in, in Chicago or Berlin and I think it's not a good idea because mm -hmm. that makes uh, the music interesting to play French music in Russia or in uh, Japan with a complete different uh, way, yeah? Um, so, and um, we have to find our own thing. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I remember uh, being fortunate in St. Petersburg to hear a Russian orchestra perform Swan Lake, a Russian ballet in Russia. And it was like nothing I had heard ever anywhere else. Yeah. And it was like, well, this is the way it was meant to sound. Yeah. And, you know, I think if that were to happen here in the States, people would think, oh, that's awful. <laughs> you know, that because they're not used to that. And to me, it was so beautiful, so energetic. Yeah. And that was that was what uh, what was intended from the beginning, yeah. you know, and, and I think uh, 
of course, German composers probably have expectations that uh, their their music is going to sound <laughs> a certain way um, by a German orchestra. I wonder if if uh, Beethoven were to hear how the United States orchestras <laughs> play his music, would it you know would he be offended? Um, that's kind of a maybe a silly question, but um, you play quite a bit of Bach. I think uh, Bach is the most difficult to phrase, but once you get it, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the pieces that you're playing, <laughs> Bach didn't write that particular part for the trumpet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how you're how you approach Bach, how you approach playing, and and do you write some of the transcriptions? Do you can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Baroque music in in German it's a very big tradition. Uh, my birth town is Lübeck. It's uh, 80 kilometers far from uh, Hamburg, and uh, there are so many churches and uh, uh, Bach plays there. He plays in Hamburg. Telemann works over 30 years in Hamburg mm -hmm. and composed here. And so, um, uh, and we have um, uh, a lot of Bach cantatas, Christmas oratorios, Magnificat, B minor mass. It's every year. Um, so uh, when I was very young, I have already contact to this music. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, many good friends are organ players, and so. And um, but uh, yeah, we have no original music for our instrument. So <laughs> so so less. Yeah, if you have the violin plays, my wife is flute player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to to play her pieces, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I go to her uh, board where the music is and look on. Oh, would be a great piece for trumpet too. <laughs> and, and so the idea is um, to uh, to show uh, it's possible on our instrument nowadays with our valves, with our slide and uh, and a flexible style. It changed a lot over the last 40 years yeah before 40 years trumpet was only an instrument who has to play very powerful in orchestra and uh, but the idea was not uh, to play very uh, light or elegant or so and uh, i think um, with morris andre timofey dokshitz mm -hmm. uh, it changed a lot uh, they show us uh, trumpet it could be in a complete different way played uh, like a uh, flute or a bow or like uh, like a singer yeah and um for me it's really fun to um make uh, the audience uh, surprise because uh, they still not believe that our instrument could be <laughs> so flexible yeah and for example uh, uh and on this church uh, i uh, will go tomorrow i play a concert with my wife with a flute, flute, mm -hmm. a trumpet, and organ. Yeah? Oh, beautiful. So you have to play in a complete different way, very soft, but uh, not only soft, you have to play your colors too. But um, yeah, it's um, a different way of trumpet playing. And we have so many instruments. Uh, you could choose uh, perhaps mutes or something that you could find a good balance with this. And that's fun for me. To have a look what works uh, on the, your instrument or what uh, what works for for me especially because um, uh, the talents of uh, the trumpet players are so different yeah one could play uh, three hours non-stop one can play a uh, very high and powerful the next could play a uh, piano but if you um, have to to put all these details in one part it's not possible mm -hmm. so i think um, it's good that every player should look um, what is good for him and create his own repertoire or part like mm -hmm. a singer yeah mm -hmm. it changed mm -hmm. uh, and each singer should know uh, uh, how uh, it works with uh, the, the voice yeah mm -hmm. it's interesting to think that we as trumpet players borrow a lot from cello and flute and violin. We do transcriptions, but I don't see flute players and violin 
<laughs> choosing very much trumpet repertoire. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not fair. <laughs> we have we do have good music too, although I don't know that the Arutunian would sound great on on violin. Yeah. Well, may, violin maybe, but not maybe not flute. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, the uh, you you talk about uh, Marie Sandre and Dokshitzer, and to me uh, Sergei is one of those that, that well, of course, he was a student of, of Doc Schitzer, but the ability to create so many different colors and to sound not like a trumpet player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love, I really love his playing. Uh, and Tina, uh, also, somebody who has such a unique, I think she plays beautifully uh, lyrically. I think she tries to emulate the human voice. Yeah. And, you know, I, re I appreciate when, uh, like yourself, uh, you know, being able to find the right color and just, especially your piccolo trumpet playing, which I'm the most familiar with, is just, it, it's, it's like me playing in the low register. Yeah. It, you know, it just, it seems like that's home for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, so do you have a, a preference of, of piccolo over the... The larger instruments. Do you enjoy playing one more than the other? Um, not really, but um, I, so I, I work together with a trumpet maker. It's a Tyne uh, mm -hmm. factory in in Bremen. It's uh, 100 kilometer far from Hamburg, and so we are we work together since I think over 30 years. Yeah, mm. and the first instruments uh, I've played uh, from uh, uh, Tyne was it the corner da caccia yeah it's yeah. Uh, uh, the round uh, like a flugelhorn and uh, i love this beautiful sound uh, goes especially in a church where if you have a big acoustic on a complete different way which you could not imagine that a trumpet sounds like this yeah and uh, so at this time i i find a lot of music for this instrument uh, and then um I'm looking for a, a, a good E flat trumpet, um, and then so we we build a piston valve uh, uh, with four valves uh, E flat trumpet, and then he he told me yeah, but it, it's possible because we have a very big bore uh, to try a C trumpet on this uh, valves yeah, mm -hmm. so we we build a four valve C trumpet, and so. It's fantastic because you have a very big range low, uh, and you have the the color of the seed trumpet. And now I I don't know we have over um, twenty different trumpet instruments already uh, with very special things, special colors, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sometimes um, not so easy to decide uh, which instrument you want to play now for <laughs> this piece or this piece. Yeah. But you have a lot of opportunities, and um, that's um, fantastic. If you play oboe, you have your instrument. Yeah, you could decide different um, <laughs> uh, ore. I don't know the English word. Yeah, the Read. piece of the uh, the reeds uh, and um, but we have so many colors, um, and it's fantastic for, for me. And mm -hmm. uh, to show uh, in a uh, in a in a concert uh, this different colors and uh, the audience they uh, after concert they came they, they uh, come and, and ask yeah uh, what is the different and explain and so and um so i think it's good to play this instrument and uh, let the audience know um, how different trumpet could be mm -hmm. well of course the instrument is important but really we have to know what we're trying to sound like first right i mean yeah. Yeah, that's right. But um, I think the instrument helps you um, to go in a in this way or this way. For example, if you play a lot of flugelhorn, yeah, you are not looking for the brilliant color. Yeah, you're looking for the very dark sound and, and soft sound, for example, because the flugelhorn sounds um, uh, much nicer if uh, instead of playing all the time fortissimo on this mm -hmm. instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have uh, um, um, a, a seed trumpet, for example, with a small bore, uh, where you, you are looking more for a brilliant sound. Uh, if you mm -hmm. practice a lot of this instrument, 
uh, the idea and your technique goes more in this direction. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, that's very important uh, to know um, that the instrument could help us to find a more relaxed way to play or a more powerful to play. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, I tell my students, um, try to uh, change a lot uh, the instrument to go not on one street. Yeah, <laughs> uh, You have to change to be more flexible. So speaking of your students, uh, are these mostly university level or younger? No, I only teach at the university this year, 20 years already. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's uh, fantastic. We are a, a great family. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, uh, before two weeks, we uh, did a recording uh, with our trumpet ensemble. I mm. arranged music. And uh, so, um, yeah, it's very interesting. We are 14, 15 students each year in my mm -hmm, class. Mm -hmm. And I have two assistants. One is uh, the Moritz uh, Gerg play the natural trumpet and mm -hmm. uh, old music, and uh, Johannes Bartmann. Uh, my, uh, both are my former students. He's mm -hmm. solo trumpet and Hamburg Symphony. Uh, does, uh, does orchestra excerpts and etudes more, and and so and yeah, it's uh, um, fantastic to uh, to come together from different countries um, and um, come together to find the same idea of articulation and sound mm. and, and so that's interesting. Well, that makes me curious because uh, I could go almost anywhere here in the States and get a very similar experience to what I've already had. And I wondered, you know, in Europe, are there specific schools of thought? Like here we have uh, the Chickowitz, Vincent Chickowitz flow studies and Jimmy Stamp and Arnold Jacobs as influences. But what about in Europe? Are there, are there particular methods or ideologies that you, that you teach? So I think uh, nowadays all these uh, ideas of trumpet schools uh, come together. Yeah, and uh, we know Chikowitz and uh, Club Garden and all, what else we know this, um, but I think um, uh, uh, as we uh, told a, a bit before, uh, for me it's very interesting uh, to find a style and um, or a, a kind of school. Yeah, that uh, you can hear. Okay, he comes or she uh, from Hamburg. Yeah, and. Um, so uh, all the students uh, who wants to, to study in Hamburg, they have already the idea, it, the sound in this way or articulation in this way. Mm -hmm. um, because the trumpet is so different and it's fantastic to have the different <laughs> schools in Russia, in, uh, in the Mexican mariachi trumpets, uh, the <laughs> Uh, trumpets in, in Paris with a lot of vibrato or so, yeah. And um, I, I think it's uh, very good uh, to um, to save uh, uh, a tradition or style uh, uh, that we uh, make more colors in, in the trumpet world, yeah. Not mm -hmm. uh, play always the same idea of articulation or, or a sound, yeah. Who taught you when you first started? Um, so uh, my teacher was uh, Peter Cullensey. He was the former solo trumpet player in uh, Hamburg uh, State um, Opera. Mm -hmm. And now he is um, 86. He is still playing mm -hmm. the trumpet. Uh, <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, and has fun, fun with this. <laughs> and um, so when I was 10 years, um, I started trumpet playing in a wind orchestra when I was six years old, uh, but without any teacher. I just try and play uh, without uh, reading music, only by hearing and play after. Mm -hmm. And then um, I came uh, after uh, four years uh, to uh, Peter Cullensee. He teach in Lübeck, my birth town. And uh, so then 
I have to change technique, embouchure, and mm. he um, shows me a very light way to, to play the instrument. We do a lot of chamber music, brass quintet, youth orchestra. Mm. I could play in an opera the, of stage music when I was uh, mm. in school already. It was fantastic. And then, um, yeah, with 18, I changed to... Um, to Berlin, uh, to Konrad de Groot at the Academy of the mm -hmm. Berlin Philharmonic. And one year later, I uh, came already to the orchestra and played with my teacher uh, together. Mm -hmm. And that was the best school, yeah, because you can hear uh, was a fantastic brass section there. And uh, we have a very big repertoire in opera and concerts. And uh, because I think is you cannot explain everything. If you hear this, it's clear, yeah? The dynamic, the articulation, the, the balance, um, all these things you cannot explain. But if you hear, you understand immediately. And that's the best school for everyone. Yeah. Agreed. I, I agree. Uh, yeah. Hearing it. Yeah, if you, you can't read it out of a book. You, you can't. Uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not a learner's manual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so your your focus really from the beginning was more of the the traditional orchestral opera chamber, right? You did have you done jazz or big band along the way? No, it's not so big tradition in in my area. Um, I I started in the wind band and then we yeah we play some Dixie and, and like this, but mm -hmm. we have no big band or, or jazz influences. And uh, so uh, from first moment uh, I have so much fun to play in a big symphony orchestra with uh, many young people a lot of energy if you play I know remember my first uh, Bruckner symphony mm. with 80 young people uh, and so it was clear from first moment I want uh, uh, to go in this symphony orchestra yeah I, I remember that too I remember that first time I played in an orchestra yeah and the sound yeah. And you're like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and it's like a drug. Yes. You just you want more and more and more. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh I have to say, just from a personal standpoint, I love Beethoven. Even though his trumpet parts are not technically difficult. I mean, there's there's yeah. the there's you have to play the right color, the right style, the right length, the right articulation. But the music is, to me, oh, that's, there's so much joy in Beethoven. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I like Mahler, too, yes, of course. But, uh, uh, yeah, Beethoven, I think. Uh, yeah, it's uh, fa fantastic. And, uh, yeah, we have no music. Yeah. So uh, my last project was to arrange uh, some Beethoven pieces for brass ensemble. Oh. And it, it works fantastic. If you find the right pieces, um uh, uh, we played first movement of the second symphony, for example, Egmont Overture, and some piano works. Uh, and um, yeah, I think uh, in a few weeks we have a, a good trailer from this island. Uh, I will go tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then we uh, make a, a small recording and video of this Beethoven arrangements. And we have so much fun with this music. Mm -hmm. Are these arrangements available? Or, or uh, not now, perhaps not later. Yet. But yeah. No, okay. No. Okay. You know, because I the the German brass and maybe the German brass uh, arrangements are available. I don't know, but uh, oh. there's so many fantastic things, and it's like, oh, I would love to have the opportunity, you know, to do that here. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I started a trumpet ensemble at my school a few years ago because that seemed to be the expectation. Everybody and and it's good. Yeah. To do that. Um, but I, I find, <laughs> I may edit this out, uh, I find that uh, too much trumpet ensemble, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, <laughs> and then, you know, sonically it's... You know already everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I, I love the brass ensemble, just so many different colors. Um, so, well, um, you've, you've toured everywhere in Europe, yes? Uh, have you been to the States? Um, yeah, two times. Um, That's all. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were, we stayed in New York, played together with uh, Phil Smith and his quintet, um, mm -hmm. Christmas, 
concert and uh, um, there and uh, then on a festival with Fred Mills and Ronald mm. Ron. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've become friends with Ronnie and what a wonderful person. Yeah. He's, he's wonderful. And I never got to meet Fred. Um, yeah. but, uh, well, was that with Canadian brass or was it just, did it just happen to be Fred and Ronnie? Yeah, Fred organized, um, a festival in uh, his school in, uh, Athens, uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, Phil, uh, is now a uh, teaching. Yes. And, uh, he invites us German brass, uh, we are so uh, a good friend since, I don't know, when I was very young, I mm -hmm. went mm -hmm. to the concerts and uh, stayed at my home and uh, tried my instruments and we have very good contact. And you meet uh, on a tour in Russia or in, I don't know where. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's fantastic. And uh, so that's the contact uh, to mm -hmm. uh, Ronald mm -hmm. and, and, and Fred, yeah. Well, I may have to ask Ronnie to to make a reason to get you back here. <laughs> yeah. I, I would I, so, um, but ITG conferences when they're overseas, are you are you part of any any of yeah, those events? I, I stayed in one uh, in Philadelphia. I don't know before. Um, oh, I don't know, fifteen years or, or mm -hmm. so, something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, mm -hmm. to meet all the guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so ITG here is pretty big, um, and I know it's supposed to be international, but um, is there a lot of interest in in being a part of something like that in Europe? You know, do, do your students, are they interested in ITG or organizations like that? Uh, yes, but um, yeah, it's not so easy, uh, especially in this times now, um, to go to foreign countries, it's very expensive mm -hmm. to go there. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's not so easy, but uh, I think uh, it's fantastic to have uh, a, a very, very big trumpet family there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and to meet friends and, and, and uh, hear everyone. And sure, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You mentioned one of your colleagues teaches natural trumpet. Pardon? Uh, you're one of your colleagues. You're you're one of your yeah. assistant teachers teaches natural trumpet. Yes, yes. Um, how long has that been a part of uh, the the school there, or has it been there for a long time? That natural um, trumpet. No. Um, so I I start to uh, to uh, to have him with the natural trumpet um, since I think five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and because uh, natural trumpet comes more and more important, uh, oh. uh, all the conductors they want to have in the symphony orchestras uh, for <laughs> uh, the classical repertoire uh, mostly, mm -hmm. and um, the freelance trumpet market in Germany comes bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So uh, nowadays it's uh, yeah you you have to uh, idea of uh, historical instruments and so. And um, yeah, Moritz, uh, Moritz Gerg, um, he is a fantastic player and he has a lot of um, concerts and uh, with um, a big um, uh, chamber orchestras in, in Europe and mm -hmm. uh, conductors. So uh, mostly the third trumpet part, it's not so difficult that, uh, so he could uh, take one of the students uh, with his ensemble. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic for the students. Uh, they learn a lot of nature trumpet to have good mm -hmm. gigs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think yeah. it is important. Mm -hmm. And do you play natural trumpet as well? Not not regularly. I, I did only one recording uh, with this, but I think uh, we have so many things uh, you could play. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to do this very good, you have. Uh, to spend more time with this, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, so I, I have not the time for 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 this to spend too much. For mm -hmm. me, it's the modern trumpet, my thing, uh, and arrangements and uh, brass ensemble solo, mm -hmm. and, and so. But if you try to do everything, I think it, it doesn't work so good. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the solo repertoire for a moment. Um, are you working on new pieces? Are you working uh, 
on uh, commissions? Are you are you premiering anything? So uh, every day I arrange and, and try to find out new pieces. And so I have a very good friend, um, Wolf Kerschek, who composed the Spanish Christmas for me. Yeah. It's my, my colleague. He is uh, uh, the head of the um, uh, uh, jazz department in our mm -hmm. school. And um, so he is very interesting to find out how, what, how, uh, how it works, what, what I want to play and, mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so he asks me every, every week, uh, what's the next I could compose for you? <laughs> so the last piece was... Uh, uh, a duo for a trumpet and harp. Um, it's uh, fantastic because uh, it's you have to play in a different way too. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, so then uh, be before this, my idea was um, to play uh, with a string quartet. Yeah, um, on a festival, they asked me to uh, to have some compositions the, uh, from uh, Schumann. Schumann mm. composed nothing for trumpet. Right. So um, uh, we arranged uh, the famous uh, Schumann pieces, Adagio and Allegro and Romance, for a trumpet and string quartet. It oh. works, works fantastic. So uh, sometimes uh, it's the program of some festivals. They ask me, uh, they invite me and ask, uh, could you play some composers of our festival? We have mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. this year Beethoven or this year. Um, I don't know. And, and then uh, I try to find out uh, the music which works for my instrument. Mm -hmm. and that's, um, yeah, uh, very interesting. I have been a fan of Das Knaben Wunderhorn for a yeah. long time. There's beautiful music and some Schubert song cycles. and and But Das Knaben Wunderhorn, there are pieces in there that I think that was meant to be for trumpet. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they were written for the voice. But and I and I've heard both uh, male and female sing some of these. Uh, but I think there's maybe that's a project for me to work on is is yeah. to write write those out for trumpet. The, they're so lyrical, uh, yeah. and the, the like the Bach, you know, the ability to learn great phrasing. Yeah, I think yeah. in something like that. So. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go ahead and work on that, that's great. If not, you know, maybe I'll I'll start working on that too. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, thinking back again to that Spanish Christmas, uh, there were a lot of there was a lot of triple tonguing, but there was a part towards the end where um, were you uh, doodle tonguing or there was uh, it wasn't flutter. There was something oh. different. Yeah. Uh, so we have on this uh, double bell trumpet uh, the effect you could change uh, with the valve the bells, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you do this um, uh, while uh, make a trill, you have uh, the color of <sighs> muted bell and open bell. Yeah? That's what did that. Yes, and it sounds like a tremolo. Sometimes I do the tremolo with the valves with the head fingerings. But um, and this piece, uh, I remember I did uh, a lot of uh, tremolo between the bells. It's interesting. Yeah. It was a, it was a very effective, uh, well, an effect. It was it was really yeah. good. But yeah. good. Thank you for explaining that. I wasn't sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. how you did that. Um, you know, and and you mentioned too, your teacher helped you learn an easier way to play. And if anybody watches you play. It's like you're not working very hard at all. You look so easy. Um, what's the secret <laughs> to, to that? It only looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I think um, if we have um, our instrument as a very good friend, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the best way to, to play in the same way. If you uh, have the idea, I have to fight against the instrument, no chance. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we um, have a look at my time at the opera, in which way the singers um, working, yeah? Um, they are very uh, clever um, in the way they warm up. Uh, they find out in which way they could play with their body um, and how it feels. Mm. And uh, I think um, still we trumpet players um, uh, have too much 
perhaps the idea uh, like a sport. Yeah, if you do uh, 20 minutes uh, this uh, technical exercise and 20 minutes this exercise, it works. But I think it's not not um, the idea. Um, we have more to hear inside. Yeah, because the technique is inside. And um, if you uh, could more remember uh, when you play in a very good uh, condition, in a good shape, and you, you try to remember this, it helps you much more to find the next day this feeling mm -hmm. than um, uh, uh, ignore this and play every day your exercise and um, mm -hmm. nevertheless feels not good, but I have to do another hour or so. Uh, that's not my idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it works not, uh, and I have the feeling the lips are tired, uh, stop, yeah, mm -hmm. or make uh, low notes or different things. But always, um, uh, if you do your uh, technical exercise, try to find uh, the heart in the sound, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, um, to make music, even if you play uh, only a simple scale, yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to do a different dynamic, or try try to make experiments with your sound, with your attack, or so, uh, to mm -hmm. find out a way, um, like a, a painter, uh, to find more colors, yeah. And if we do this uh, with the idea of singing very light, uh, mm -hmm. you have much more fun. Is that how you start each day? Is just kind of a light singing uh, style, or do you have? Uh, well, I, I know you said you don't really like a routine where you do twenty minutes of this, twenty. But what what does it look like when you pick up the instrument every day? Um, it changed over the years because um, I think um, it depends what you have to play. Yeah. So, for example, if you have to play an orchestra. You, uh, the job is completely different if you have to play solo. In orchestra, uh, you have to rest half an hour and suddenly you have to play a high soft note, I don't know, or a, a solo. And um, to, uh, you are cold and have to play immediately. If you are a, a soloist, um, you warm up, go to the front of the orchestra and you could play, yeah? Mm -hmm. and. Um, the conductor or the orchestra has to follow your dynamic, your tempo. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, and my ambition changed a lot uh, when I play more solo because mm -hmm. I could choose uh, what I play, yeah, which pieces I play and when, yeah, mm -hmm. and which dynamic and which tempo or so. If you uh, play in an orchestra, uh, you have to do what. Um, the dynamic is before or the conductor wants you play in the, this way or this way. And that's not every time very healthy for your mm -hmm. ambition. And so um, uh, it comes for me better and better uh, when I have the chance to play for myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, because you could play every day very healthy. Yeah. And then uh, I try to um, to fix this feeling. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the time to warm up, I could reduce more and more. So uh, if I do not big mix mistakes, uh, I could take my trumpet, have five to ten minutes, and I, in a, in a shape, I could play that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And before, uh, when I was in orchestra. Uh, I have to play the fortissimo um, before, then I feel, uh, okay, in this way it works. Uh, so have rest, and so complete different. Mm -hmm. yeah. That has not been my experience. <laughs> it's, yeah. and, and even here, there's kind of an expectation that you do a routine, that you spend 20, 30 minutes, or with the Bill Adam routine, two hours. <laughs> yeah. Schlossberg. Yeah. Schlossberg, Schlossberg, and um, yeah. it can be exhausting, you know. Yeah. And it's it, but it's it's like lifting weights. It's just yeah. it seems like it's just building muscle. And of yeah. course, you can play those things musically, but I and I did that for a while, and it was mind numbing. It's like enough, you know. I could yeah. be making music yeah. rather than rather than just this. Yeah. It's it's uh, the same with me, but. Uh, 
I, I hate to do only this for, for a longer time. I could do between <laughs> my, but I create my own exercise. Um, and uh, because I think it's very important, you have to know uh, what you have to, to work on this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, to play, uh, to, to make more, uh, to work on endurance. It's not necessary to make stupid uh, technical exercise. You could play everything. My opinion is uh, it depends only the way you play this. Yeah. So uh, you could do uh, in the wrong way every technical exercise. But if you um, play a very difficult thing in the right way, you have more um, for your technical mm -hmm. um, development uh, mm -hmm. than uh, play in a wrong way uh, um, from Schlossberg or something else. Yeah. Right. So, well, it being, 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 way. yeah. I'm sorry, I spoke over you on that, but I, but I think it's being efficient. You're saying when you're efficient, that's, is that the right way? That is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how can I come study with you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, Hamburg, Larry. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> Uh, I lived in Germany from 70 to 74, oh, yeah. uh, just outside of Stuttgart, and I was uh, four to eight years old, so I don't remember a lot, but I do remember uh, traveling to the Black Forest and Ludwigsburg. Is Ludwigsburg? Uh, yeah. There was a yeah. big, beautiful castle, yeah. if I remember, and I remember yeah. the, the, the flower garden. Yeah. Uh, it was just gorgeous. And my dad would take us and we would go. Um, I remember doing Volks marches. That was like uh, like a 5K these days. Yeah. And uh, just exploring Germany. And it was so beautiful. And uh, when I was on the cruise ship recently and I was able to get to Hamburg and then Kiel up on the north coast, yeah. I, I, I felt like I was home. Yeah. It's just, and, and of course, as a musician now, I want to go back because, and, and see everything because there's, now I can understand and appreciate the history yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. of all the great music there. Yeah. Uh, and I did see my first opera in Berlin in 1972, I think, uh, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. And I, I remember just a little bit about that, but I, I want to get back to Germany. There's so yeah. many beautiful things to see. Sure and, does. Yes. And, uh, and of course, uh, Tony Plog, uh, you know, he's, he said, come visit <laughs> when you get over there. So yeah. I'll have to do that. But um, I, I really appreciate the time today. This, this has been fun. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing everything. And, yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my listeners are really going to enjoy this. There's, uh, you know, getting to know you uh, a little bit better. And uh, I look forward to more, uh, more things to come on YouTube. Um, yeah. Are there more projects like the hip hop? Um, so uh, different things. Uh, uh, now we uh, did some uh, things in uh, new compositions in, in the studio of my friends. And so the next week we have a lot of, uh, uh, different videos and uh, productions there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, I hope it all goes well for you. Yeah. And, stay uh, healthy. And, yes. Uh, I was going to say the same thing. Please stay healthy, and uh, yeah. uh, hopefully we'll we'll meet at some point. I hope so. Yeah. So well, thank Come you very much. Hamburg. Come to Hamburg. So, yeah. I will. I'd love to. Thank you. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen, Larry. Thank you for everything. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.